Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Burton Borders and are Chelsea in danger of going out of business? <gasps> welcome to the Burton Borders. Ain't got no time for no stalling. Yeah. We are the risers, we're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah, we're here to give you the news about your dear beloved blues. Yeah. Like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. So, in today's news, guys, we are. I'm going to be talking about Chelsea and the latest from the government sources, apparently. And I'm going to just do a little bit of transfer news. If there is a club, if we can. Are we going to be, have, be able to do transfers or? Are we not going to even be a club so that we can do transfers in the first place? Let's find out. Right. So, <clears throat> news has come out about an hour ago that um, Chelsea are in danger of going out of business. And it reads that the government have accused Roman Abramovich of putting Chelsea at risk of going under by allegedly refusing to accept the minister's new sales structure. Whitehall is ramping up the pressure on the Russian to accept a new compromise agreement over his £1.6 million loan. And it also goes on to say there's quite serious concerns in the government that the deal may fall apart and that Roman Abramovich is ultimately willing to let Chelsea go under. Warn the government source. Poppycock. Rubbish. You know, Roman Abramovich is trying all he can to, um, to make this sale as smooth as possible. He already came out earlier and rubbished the report, some scaremongering by some, some, some news outlets before. It could be... There could be some, some truth in this, but not from Roman Abramovich's side, from the government. This government has handled this situation badly from start to finish. These guys do not know what they're doing. And if anyone's moving the goalposts, it's probably them, not Roman Abramovich. But whilst um, in the process of making this video, and some another report has come out about five minutes ago of me making this video where it says a Michael Penrose, who's a former chief executive of UNICEF UK, has been recruited to establish the foundation that will be charged with using the 2.5 billion of proceeds from the sale of Chelsea FC to benefit the victims of the war in Ukraine. So if they're getting somebody from UNICEF UK to do this, then there's transparency. And um, UNICEF ain't going to be um, keeping some of the money aside so that Roman Bambridge can get it after the sanctions. So, you know, either the government are trying to play hardball to push this sale through, or I don't know what the agenda is. But you know what, guys? I'm not panicking yet because, you know, all the newspapers, what they try to do, jump on a story, cause panic amongst the fan base. But Ben Jacobs, he's a man who I've trusted throughout this process. Um, he stays silent on this and um, he tweeted about six hours ago actually that um, everything was, as far as he knew, he knew that everything was, was, was still on course for it to be completed within the next week or so. Um, the Premier League is soon to pass um, the, off, uh, uh, the directors and owners test and push that through and as far as he knew that the, 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 the government licence would be issued shortly. So. Again, as I said, I'm waiting to see from official sources before I start to um, start getting worried because lots of scaremongering about and I'm not buying any of this. So, um, so let's move on to transfer news because I'm confident that there will be a club, there will be a Chelsea and we soon will be able to make transfers. There's talk about um, Lewandowski. Lewandowski is somebody who we've been tracking for free windows, apparently. Thomas Tuchel likes him very much. And um, his agent is Pini Zahavi. He's got a good relationship with Chelsea. But although he's got a good relationship with Chelsea, his, his relationship was with um, Roman Abramovich. So I'm not sure what his, his, his relationship's like with the other members of the board. So if his relationship is good with them as well, and talks have already been had, could be seamless but you know obviously the sticking point is first of all we've got to ensure that um the club is is um got in new ownership um at you know, within the next couple of weeks and then um we also um, there's that barcelona you know interest but um and you know somewhere said that was his preferred option but is it i don't know <clears throat> so 
we'll see what happens on, on, on that front. And, sorry, there's a third obstacle as well, is um, Lukaku. So we can't have Lukaku and Lewandowski. So we need to find a buyer for, for Lukaku as well. So that one may be a difficult one to, to pull off. Um, in other news, um, and it's a Chelsea Barcelona sort of struggle at the minute because like, um, Rafinha is uh, someone we've been interested in. Apparently, we because of the sanctions, it's allowed Barcelona to steal a march on him. So it, it looks like um, they've gone into negotiations with him at the moment. <clears throat> but you've got to bear in mind, guys, um, we, the window doesn't officially open till i think it's the 8th of, of june the, the, the transfer window so you you can sign as you saw with with um harlan that you can sign people before they can't be registered before that day but you know if people did want to come where they're interested in championships coming to chelsea they don't have to make up their decision about joining another clubs um, at the moment they could wait and see what's happening because two men is another one but apparently if you read whatever reports you're reading, that Liverpool have stolen the march because they've um, come in with um, negotiations for him. And we've seen it before with Liverpool because um, we saw it with the Diaz deal where Tottenham were where they're heading the race. Liverpool came in last minute and were able to buy him. But if we are smart negotiators, then we can be saying, look, Liverpool have already got Fabinho there. They've already got Thiago um, in, in that position we potentially may be getting rid of one, possibly two holding midfielders. And he's more likely to get first team opportunities at Chelsea. So we've got good negotiators, which I, you know, I very much doubt. I don't, I don't, the way we've done business in the past, then we've got a good case. We can make a good case. Plus, obviously we had talks with him um, last season. So he kind of knows what offers on the table for us. And the other thing is, Liverpool need to agree a deal with his club, which may be the sticking points, particularly that Monaco now are probably going to be in the um, Champions League. They can afford to um, ask for a premium for Chouameni because um, they don't want to lose him. They want to probably want to keep him for a one more season so that they can um, play Champions League football with him. So, But if he does go, he's going to take a big offer. And at, um, Liverpool, remember they got the ass on a 40 million. So Liverpool are not going to pay 70, 80 million euro asking price for two minutes they're going to try and bargain down the price so if they're trying to do that and Chelsea come in with an offer closer to the valuation that Monaco want then you know that deal can still be reignited again there'll be more even if we're spending 70 to 80 million euro then it'll be more it'll be a lot cheaper than Declan Rice say who's valued at 150 million pounds um so um, Kunde, we all know already, he's still keen on joining Chelsea. He's waiting to see what happens to, um, in the um, um, so before that that's given the green light. So um, there are deals to be had, you know, um, and we'll find out more later because Todd Bowley does mean business. Um, he spoke to some fans after the FA Cup, and he reassured him. He said, "Don't worry." We're gonna, I'm going to get you back up to the top where you belong. Big things are going to be happening. And he's going to be, want to make one or two statement signings as well. So, you know, I think that we will try and um, definitely uh, make a couple of decent um, signings so, you know, he can introduce himself to the club fully. So, um, stay positive, guys. You know, don't let this, this news get you down because I'm confident that um, everything is going to happen. Now, I've, I've, I've reassured you before in the past, I reassured you about the rickets, I reassured you the time when the, the 1.6 billion loan issue was, was coming out, and I'm reassuring you, reassuring you again, you know, this club's not going to be allowed to go under. Forget all the noise coming out from different, you know, whether it be the government or different news outlets. I'm telling you now, on this channel, Chelsea are here to stay, we're here to compete. We're here to remain on top. You heard it here first. So as I was editing this video, um, Ben Jacobs, the most reliable person out there, he's not after clickbaits, he's not after fake news, he's not scaremongering, he's come out to reassure the Chelsea fans, as I said before, that everything is expected to go through as agreed. So uh, Martin Ziegler, I think, from the Times has questioned it because he's one of the ones who's going around scaremongering. So you know what? Um, the um, tabloid press are in the mud once again. So if you want the real news, 
follow Ben Jacobs and don't listen to any of these other hacks out there. So guys, if you believe it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on all post notifications so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Take care guys, bye-bye.